Hi beautiful sisters, welcome, welcome, just my song to bring me into the space tonight, um, I am oh, it's hauntingly beautiful and what is the word I'm looking for, I don't know, it's got a power, so yeah, I am. I am is what came to be with us tonight. Um, so welcome. Um, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional caretakers and custodians of the land that I am on. Here in Sydney, the Garingai, the wider Eora nation, and acknowledging the caretakers of the land in whatever place you are on this beautiful planet of ours, and um, give thanks for the care that has been taken so we can sit here tonight and may we learn from the love, gentleness caring and that sense of belonging to the earth rather than the earth belonging to us. Mm. Thank you for letting us be here. <sighs> okay, so how beautiful Nicole. I'm so excited. Um, come on, technology work for me tonight. Dr. Nicole um, should be joining us tonight and I'm so excited yeah about this conversation um yeah it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a really interesting one this woman has a lot to share with us so oh hey. hello is it working <laughs> oh come on come on technology well I can hear you, but I can't ah, see you. <laughs> okay, I can see you. Now, what's happening here? Mm. Wow. I'm in the void. How weird is that? Uh, now. <laughs> how, do, how do we, how can we have... Okay, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna give we're gonna give Nicole another go. That was weird. I haven't had that happen before. That's a that's a new experience. It either works or doesn't work. <gasps> oh yay! <laughs> yay! Hello. Hello. It worked. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm a Facebook Live virgin here, so you know, bear with me. <laughs> it's mm. it's all right. I think exciting I think stuff. Most people that end up joining me are, so it's it's totally fine. And um, whether you are or you aren't, technology is going to do what it's going to do, and we just kind of roll with it. <laughs> That's fine. Thanks for breaking me in. <laughs> You're welcome, you're welcome, and thank you so much for being oh, here. It is so good to see you. It's been <laughs> far too long, and, yeah, it's just wonderful. Thank you for the invitation, and I, I'm just so thrilled to just be sharing space tonight with you and all the beautiful sisters that you're involved with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I was just... um. Before we um, got on the call, I was kind of just sitting and uh, like thinking about, yeah, like we met a long time ago in, uh, you know, it seems like yeah. a different life. <laughs> I was just, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Working in disability forever ago, um, and but yes. then I was thinking as well about your amazing books. So. Um, yeah, the, the Dancing with Dragons, which 
I was just thinking about all our books are packed because we're moving. I was just about to go and get it and then I was like, oh, packed. Um, but I was like, I, I need to read oh. that again <laughs> soon. I just... I just loved that book so much. I think, I, you know, I read it in like five minutes because I was just like, <laughs> um, yeah, but also the Women of the Wise Earth, that um, that beautiful book, um, which again is packed. Um, but that, that launch, that book launch is actually where I first met my beautiful beloved Peter. <laughs> it was it was kind of like No a, Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> even though we, we worked at the same place and that's kind of where the relationship uh. ended up, like we, we got to know each other more, but it was actually and and my mm -hmm. friend Yvonne is actually watching us. She was there and she said Oh, that's that's um Peter, he's a Czech guy, he's a bit weird. <laughs> really special moment for me in my life because that's the moment I kind of really first saw the man that I, I now spend my life with which you know the father of my precious oh, baby oh. and yes yeah. it, was, it was really special oh. I'm saying she remembers <laughs> yeah yeah so, <laughs> yes he still is indeed <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, so just... you know, isn't it remarkable how the universe just dances like that and pathways cross and life, you know, it just unfolds in the most unpredictable, amazing ways like that. And who would have thought back then that we'd be sitting here having this conversation in this form about whatever we're going to talk about tonight? You know, it's just. It's wonderful. <laughs> it is. It is. It's so, so special. Yeah, it is. It is that dance, just dancing in and out. So, yeah, yeah, really special. So I'm so grateful to have you here and I'm so excited to, to hear. So, yeah, like, do you want to start by telling, telling us a bit about you and what you do yeah. as now Dr. Nicole Rule? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> so, uh, well, as a life coach, uh, I work with people who have had profound transformative experiences. Uh, so I like to call them notes, non-ordinary transcendent experiences. So you might hear me say notes a bit tonight. Yeah. And, you know, they're the types of experiences where it's not part of our regular everyday happening um, and it occurs or a series of its occur and they profoundly shift, um, you know, who we were beforehand to who we are afterhand and they can be beautiful, they can be really disturbing, they can be just like, whoa, uh, but they just really shift us. And so naturally when life before and after radically changes and we're reassessing everything, like our relationships, our work that we do, our family bonds, uh, you know, the food that we eat, the people that we hang out with, you know, this can cause a lot of disturbance um, in life. And so now I'm working with people um, who are, you know, making those transitions themselves and wanting to integrate these profound experiences. Trying to understand the experience and what happened and pull out gorgeous gifts. Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, you've stopped. Uh-oh. Uh, totally paused. <laughs> Are we back? Are you starting to move again? <laughs> back now? I'll, I'll try not to move too yes, fast. Yes, you're coming, you're coming <laughs> back, you're coming back. <laughs> How is it? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh. No. Cutting out. Oh, we were going so well. <laughs> Okay, we might, we might just, I might just um, take you off, Nicole, and then add you back in. What a, what a disappointment. <laughs> just for now, just for now. She's going to be back. She's going to be back. Um, yeah, because getting to, to talk about those, um, yeah, the, the transformative experiences and I really, yeah, resonating with that, the before and after, um, yeah, of, of an experience that's happened um, in our lives. Now, I can see you there, Nicole, but there's no camera. Your camera, your video has just, uh huh, there it is. <laughs> So let's bring her back and yeah, talk more about these transformative experiences. Um, yeah, come on technology, be my friend, be my friend. <laughs> oh, so funny. I ran a tech group at work today. Nobody turned up. Come on technology. <laughs> Okay, let's, oh no, she disappeared again. That's really weird. Camera was there, camera's gone. Mm. Okay, we'll, we'll wait because it, it did come back um, just before. So I'll keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, so really, <laughs> really was looking forward to this um, special conversation with Nicole, but I'm sure that we will get her back on and be able to to dive into her work. Um, yeah, the the book that Nicole's written, Dancing with Dragons, is really um, about yeah her own experience um, through that, and I really I really recommend um, reading it. It's it's so easy to read and. Um, yeah, just so, just sucked me in. <laughs> I just, I just loved it. So, yeah, yeah. If we can get to have Nicole on to to share a bit about that, this will be a that book's a good way to dive in even deeper um, and learn more. Okay, so interestingly, again, we've got a blank screen. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> this is so, I'm so sorry. This is no. really, well, this is, you know, isn't this a non-ordinary experience? This is what happens is when it? a lot of electricity comes together. We're getting screwy <laughs> on technology. Dear me. It is, it is a non-ordinary experience when, because I have <laughs> never had it happen where, the screen is black, but I can hear perfectly. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, ha ha, it... indeed. I'm laughing too. <laughs> okay, I, I signed out. I si I'm so sorry, folks that are watching. Sorry about this. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> like I said, these things happen. Last week, I am... Um, I did, I did one of these um, conversations with, uh, like I'm starting to do, meeting with mothers for bereaved mothers, and I did this. Uh, oh! <laughs> I love that face. <laughs> the weirdest thing happened. I was signing back in and then I could hear myself out of the phone. It was like, wow, now we're really getting trippy. <laughs> Oh, you're hearing when, me? When we, we, do... <laughs> we have a delay too. This is hilarious. <laughs> oh, really? 
when I do these calls, usually um, whatever we're talking about seems to really just come in and up and, yeah, is really, really present. So, yeah, this is pretty not ordinary. So <laughs> we'll just roll with it. Wow. So maybe tonight we need to talk about presence and clear lines of communication and lack no cut out the disturbances just channel clarity (laughs) (laughs) and it will be (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh well anyway tell me tell us back to you back to all yeah about what what you do what you're about share Sure, sure. So the coaching um, of people who've had non-ordinary transcendent experiences, notes, uh, who want to integrate those and make the most of those gifts and do their stuff in the world. You know, we get transformed and often that comes with some kind of a feeling of this is what I need to do with my life path. Um, And so it can be helpful to have someone at that point uh, to just, you know, help coach and mentor and navigate and cheerlead um, with. So that's what I do now. And uh, that came about because of my own experiences. Um, And so here we are. And the studies that were completed um, are about that as well. It was about the non-ordinary and uh, people who've had these experiences and understanding it from the level of personality. So, um, again, who we are beforehand, how we change, and how we can use the most of who we are to do even more of what we're here to do in the world. Yeah. Mm. And so along with that has come some other developments as well. So there's, I wanted to get a few hats for tonight, uh, but this hair doesn't fit many hats these days. So (laughs) that was one hat, which is the coaching hat. (laughs) And... uh, (laughs) Yeah. And there's some other partnerships. Um, So one exciting partnership, and this will be the announcement tonight because it hasn't been announced in the public yet, is with the organization called IANS, the International Association for Near Death Studies, Uh, started about 40 years ago. And it's like education and support groups for people who've gone through near death experiences and other really profound transformations and very strong in the U S not so much going on over here, little touches in other parts of the world. Uh, Long story short, I'm helping them to launch online groups so that we can have again, these groups that come together where experiences can share uh, what they've been through, meet other folks who have been through something similar and, uh, and, and get resources. So uh, that's happening on the blue moon this month. We're launching our first pilot group and uh, I get to facilitate that, which is really exciting because I just love meeting folks like this and just having these conversations. And uh, yeah, so we'll have our first group of 20 and off we go. And then IANS will kind of mushroom that out. And hopefully soon we'll have different branch groups like um, these groups for, you know, ayahuasca experiences or professional groups like nurses who go through certain experiences uh, either themselves or with the people that they serve and want to talk about it there. So we don't quite know where it's going. It's going to have a bit of an organic growth um, to it. Uh, But, yeah, that's going to start at the end of this month. So that is very exciting too. If anyone is interested, hit me up and we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So what would be some of the, like, the near-death experiences and you said the nurse, like, what, what other sort of things would, yeah, fit within that? Sure. So, uh, so there's a category of with the near death experiences, also like death like experiences or death related. So people who don't physically die in any way, but might have had some kind of a sense of 
you know, either they left their body or a part of them has now gone and has ended and they transitioned somewhere and they came back. So again, they have the typical experiences that someone who had the clinical near-death experience might have. Uh, they report the same kinds of things. Or, for example, the nurses, especially bereavement nurses, they're with people all the time who are transitioning. And so it's known that at the time of transition, uh, there can be experiences that happen. There are shared bed experiences, for example, where when you're with a loved one and those two people are very close, there can be a shared, maybe a vision of where they're going next or uh, people sometimes see, you know, light come off the body or they can have profound transformative experiences themselves through maybe dream or message. Any number of things can happen. So that's one huge um, category is the near death and the death like or death related experiences. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there's all of these other categories as well, where, you know, mystical experiences, religious experiences, uh, psychedelic induced um, experiences. Yeah. Whole heap. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It gets pretty out there. <laughs> yeah, and what what amazing, you know, what what amazing sort of conversations will will come that you'll be able to be facilitating and I would also imagine for for some people like like you said um earlier like these experiences can be um like ecstatic, amazing, beautiful, you know, and also I would imagine sometimes really confusing and scary. And so to have to have the space um, to talk about that, for it to be somewhat normalised, accepted, and to, to I guess, have um, a, a framework or a... Um, container or, or or something a map or something for it yep. mm. exactly so we provide a space for the experience to be present and there's no dogma there's no um you know predetermined or set path of how someone's experience should be it's simply a welcoming space for the experiencer to share what they went through uh, and be validated, you know, even in having an open ear, that in itself is um, is validating for many people. Right. And when you hear others who have had something similar occur, um, there's, as you know, there's a magic in groups uh, that can happen. And even just listening, you know, people themselves can, can have the aha. Yeah, okay, that's what happened for me or that's okay that I went through that and I'm not crazy after all. There's someone mm. else out there that understands. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, such a, a massive, I, I would imagine, like, a, yeah, just such a massive thing to, to hold and to walk with and then to have a sense of understanding and belonging would just be, yeah, a relief um, but also, you know, for, for other people like who were quite comfortable and loving it, just being able to talk about it more with people who get it um, and kind of, kind of go there yep. with them. Yeah, you know, and for a lot of people who might have had nothing to do with any of these experiences before because they can happen spontaneously and they can happen to anyone, you know, someone might have a regular working week and then on a Friday night experience something profound, something shifts and then Monday they have to go back to the ordinary world again and life and yet everything is different. And, you know, what do you do with that, right? And a lot of people just carry that with themselves. You know, maybe I'm a bit mad. I don't know what that was about. Better not talk about it. People won't understand. Or, you know, when there's community and people um, who are doing something similar or have gone through something similar, then, you know, there's an opening. Uh, there's an opening just to say, you know, this happened and, um, and it was a little different. Uh, it was a little strange, you know, it was awesome. Yeah. And absolutely, these experiences can arise out of, um, you know, the most expansive, opening, beautiful types of things, but also out of 
uh, great, great stress. And, um, you know, like these experiences happen to soldiers on the battlefield, for example. They're around life and death at its, at its edge. Uh, you know, there are uh, war vets that come back and have had near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, profound dreams. And uh, again, spaces are needed to integrate these things. So it's not just the, uh, you know, the, the woos and the unicorns that kind of go through this. Uh, it, it can be anybody who has these experiences. And I think that's, that's why it interests me so much. You know, that's that's why I find this this amazing. Yeah, they don't discriminate. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's it, the there's sort of the like you said, you know, ayahuasca or those sort of experiences where people, I guess, are putting themselves into a position and calling that um, sort of, yeah, that that experience to happen, that transformative and um, yeah, altered state um, to actually happen, but then to be to be someone who's just going about their day and something to happen, then you know, not really know where to where to put that and who who you are on the other side as well. Um, and what, yeah, I that's so so interesting and yeah, that like yeah, I guess I haven't. I haven't thought about it a whole lot. Like I guess talked about, um, you know, spiritual emergence and spiritual emergency and those sorts of things. But, yeah, I guess thinking about, um, yeah, people that are in really, really different environments and having those things happen and what do you do with that? What, what do you do with that? That's right. And we right now, for better or worse, are in a time where we live in a spiritual candy shop. You know, you can go out there and pretty much have any experience you want, right? We have access to so many tools and technologies that might have been kept away beforehand, which might have been a good thing, uh, you know, but th they're here now. And so people are having these experiences. And on top of that, we have more life resuscitating technologies as well. So you add all of those together and we have a bunch of people walking around who've gone through something profound and don't quite know where to park it or put it or transmute it into the next part of life. And even those who seek, you know, the hardcore who might go into the Peruvian jungle and have their ayahuasca experience and then meet Mother Aya and be totally transformed. Well, guess what happens when you come back home again? you know, same place, same people, same life. And unless, you know, there's, um, unless there's support around that, unless there's community structures, your own perception, unless there's things to help you along the way to integrate, it can be really challenging. Mm. Yeah, and I guess what I had been thinking of the challenging part is, you know, what the hell just happened, um, who who am I now and all of that sort of stuff. But also when I guess with those sorts of experiences that you've called in and you've gone and done this work and I guess you've dived really deep and um, opened, opened something up but then you kind of get back to everyday life and it's quite easy to even like you kind of come back going, yeah, I'm going to do this and this is who I am now and blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, and then you kind of come back and it's easy to kind of slip back and, yeah, go back to the old patterns and the old way. And there's one little part of you that's kind of just like, oh, I remember that. But it's easy to slip back here. So, yeah, even that part of it is important. And... You know, and I think there's um, a beauty in the old meeting the new. You know, for me, working with people, integration is bringing those two together and not to completely throw it away. You know, there's some new age tracks that talk about, you know, dissolving the ego and completely ridding oneself of the ego. And, you know, fine, if that's your path and that's what works for you, go for it. Um, 
personally how I feel about that is that the ego is actually really important you know I see it as a compass of of our consciousness this is how Jung spoke about it and it's there it's a it's a mechanism that is inbuilt in us to help us navigate uh in the world you know so without it of course it's like the you know it might be some profound transcendent experience but we're here on planet earth still and uh and we have people that we work with and walk the world with uh you know and how do you how do you come back from an experience like that and integrate it in a sound way where your relationships don't have to break up but where they can you know move to another part move to another stage Uh, it's common for people to have these experiences to, you know, end in divorce and their relationships because it can be too hard when one person has had something that they can, you know, they can barely verbalize and, uh, you know, they, they, maybe they still love that person. Maybe they can't live with that person. You know, it really, it brings up so much, so much. So we're not just talking about someone finding it and integrating it within themselves. It's like, what about all the people around you as well too? You know, how do you delicately navigate that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think about like through um, some of my studies and seeing um, that like transforming people and yeah, seeing relationships because of everything that's happened yeah, those relationships are no longer. And even I think for for me, you know, going through after Kai's death, you know, for me that was, you know, I was right at the edge. Like, yeah, like I, the world, the world literally lit, like looked different. Like my, my vision had changed so it it looked completely different and the way that I related to people and the way I saw well I you know saw slash see the world had completely changed I and you know there there was there was parts that were you know or moments or times when it was like all of this has to go you know I, I can't have any of it um you know these relationships these things this yeah I think uh you know ready to pack up and go somewhere Uh, yeah and yeah so being able to kind of come yeah find, find myself again and yeah it is like you were saying it it's kind of a bringing in of Oh, and yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> just like the the time of like, I guess it's a it's a deconstruction and then the reconstruction. So, and what pieces of the old remain? What what am I going to like consciously keep here? And what what needs to to keep gone? And what what else? What new do I bring in? I love that, you know, the image that comes to me as you're talking there is of the puzzle and like it's this elaborate 10,000 piece puzzle and someone just comes along and goes, you know, kapow and blows this big hole in it and you're left with pieces and some are missing and some are broken and some are misshaped and how do you then put it all back together, you know, and some are still the same. Right. And, and, and we carry on with life like that. Their experience reshape. Yeah. (laughs) The delays. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Uh, Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, there's, there's just so, so many, um, yeah, different experiences that I guess I, I'm now seeing that you're you're talking about and also the way that we we come out the other side. Um yeah, I guess it it even the the point where it could be you know, I, I, I guess I, I had a point where it was yeah, I, I 
I literally made, had to make a choice of whether I stay or go, you know, am, am I stepping back into life or am I totally stepping out? Like that, that's, that's where it got to. And I would imagine as well for some people, like especially with some of the near death experiences, like depending on what they've experienced and seen, how, how do you, yeah, I guess be here and, and some of the choices that might be, oh, um, what's the word, like, present or you may find or, or um, oh, how am I trying, what am I trying to say? The choices that you might find lying in front of you that you never thought were there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're touching on something really, um, you know, really accurate with, with many experiences is it's like the Harry Potter thing, right? There can be two worlds is how some people can experience it. And so it's like having a foot in both realities. Yeah. Are we still connected? Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't know. My, my screen's doing funny things, but if you, I'll keep talking yeah yeah <laughs> okay so it's like having you know a foot in two worlds and for some depending on what the experience is there's a preference to stay in one world over you know the regular ordinary world that we have right maybe relationships are too hard maybe people just don't get it you know maybe I don't have a community of friends or a tribe that I can just be myself with but that experience that I had you know I felt understood there I felt loved there I felt connected there I felt freedom there um, and particularly with near-death experiences it can be for, for some people they they go to a place they call heaven uh, or home and, you know, I've, I've spoken with people who are back here in their physical form, in their regular life, and it's hell, you know, it's really hard. And some people do even want to end their life to go back. You know, it's, it's an absolute reality. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, there are times when this, this life, this, you know, being in the physical body, being here and the, the day-to-day -day things that we, we face and we're, the decisions we have to make and all of those things, it can be painful and be really hard. And when you've seen something so far from that and, um, yeah, known, known that's there. Like I guess for, for lots of us, we walk kind of, um, yeah, maybe, maybe some with the hope it's there, um, some thinking it's not there, but to have the experience and to have, to have been there and then to, to be back here, it could be, yeah, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> life life can be really hard, you know? This this incarnation, this this physical form on this physical cool planet can be really freaking hard sometimes. You know, we we have a full gamut of emotions. We have a full gamut of experiences. Sometimes life is not fair. Sometimes, you know, awful shit just happens and we're still here. And so do you choose to leave or do you choose to stay in the game, you know? And for as long as we get to be on this planet, what do you want to do with your time here? You know, what, yeah. what, what, what do you want to do really at, at, at the core? Um, we all have a limited amount of time, you know. I had, I had a very wise grandmother on my, my mum's mum and the samurai, she comes from samurai. And she said to me, as long as you can do, because there will come a time when you can't, you know, and that voice comes back to me frequently. She's, she's actually her her spirit has been with me through an experience I had um, at a note, a non-ordinary transcendent experience. And, you know, so that's this voice of wisdom that is constantly there. And like, 
our time is limited on this planet. And um, what do you want to do? Mm. So that would be uh, like the other, like I guess your work is being with people to, I guess, find a place to to be with what their experience, that whatever has changed, yeah, be with that foot in two worlds and um, being here after whatever experience that is and that integration, but also that really important piece of, yeah, and, and yeah, I guess once you get to a particular point, the exciting piece as well of, so you're here, what, what are you going to do? Now what? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like you just went through that and that was amazing. You made it. You're still here. Now what? You know? <laughs> yeah, it can be exciting and it can be terrifying for people because, mm -hmm. you know, let's face it, we like things that are comfortable and predictable. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, yeah, it's so true. Comfortable and predictable <laughs> can be so good. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, and necessary, I think, to we, we need roots and shoots, right? So the comfortable, is, uh, that's our roots. We need something stabilising us, um, the repetitive and th there's, there's a great safety and security in having something that we know is going to be constant. Um, and because of that, you know, we then have a bit more of a leaning into and relaxing into the change, the shift um, that is also presenting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It would be. And, it, yeah, I guess that, like what you were talking about, the, those roots and, you know, I've talked, um, yeah, talked with clients as well about like the anchor, the anchor, like especially after, um, yeah, the, the loss of a loved one um, and you can be thrown into, you know, just it's like everything you knew. And like, like you said, with the puzzle, the puzzle's been shattered. But so what what is the anchor? What's what's going to... Yeah, give you a point um, to kind of, uh, yeah, then then move from, then grow from, and then find find where the next point of safety is. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You know, and I think of a tree in that situation, right? It lands and it goes deep. And it has the rings over the season and time because there's that level of repetition that happens and yet there's the growth that happens as well, you know. Yeah. We have so much to learn from nature. <laughs> so much. <laughs> it's so simple. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's so true. <laughs> like we, we go searching and try and figure all this stuff out and it's like it's just there. Like the answer, yeah, it's just there. Like if you just, right. just it there. <laughs> ah, it's so yeah. true. And we, we kind of go out and, you know, have a little bit of time. Oh, I feel so much better. Everything makes sense and I'm kind of, things are all right. It's like, yeah, yeah. We've, that's one of the big things for us to remember. That's. Yeah, that's home. That's, you know, I guess you talked about like people having that experience of heaven or home and it's like we've got our heaven and home here for this this physical experience. It's here. She's there, out there. They're ready to, to care for us and nurture us and for us to learn from and gain from her wisdom. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and again, that's why I love working with people who are at that transformative edge so much because it's really that now what is, you know, now what, and usually for these people, now what in a way that can benefit others as well. 
something that often happens out of a transcendent experience is, um, you know, a sense of I is shifted to something that is interconnected, something that is larger, something that is beyond this little encapsulated piece of skin and flesh. So after the fact of the experience and when we get to the now what, you know, what do you want to do in the world? People will often be, well, I want to do it as a we, you know, I want to do it together. Uh, I saw that beautifully, you know, in, in, in what happened with Kai and this transformation and then with bereaved mothers, you know, it's, there's a we-ness that happens after the intense I, you know, and the experience and the intense loss, it just kind of, uh, it morphs, you know, into something else. And, uh, and that's been so, so beautiful because as painful and as unimaginable as an experience like that is, what has come about from it, you know, opens hearts also. Um, mm. That's beautiful what you've done, Megan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, mm. I I I see that like with with lots of bereaved mothers as well. It is yeah, there's there's a a need to to be there to to help other other people going through yes, a similar experience and helping yeah, or, or helping other people to help those people going through that experience as well. Just, yeah, like you said, going through that um, intense I experience to to then, yeah, being there for, for, for others. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was this guy, William Broad, and, uh, and he was the one that came up with the term notes, you know, non-ordinary transcendent experiences. And he speaks about them as, um, you know, yes, all of these things happen, but what are the fruits of the experience? You know, what, what can we then take away to be shared and to nourish one another? Um, and like you said before, creating heaven on earth, you know, or experiencing heaven on earth um, or an earth that is, you know, in in a beautiful state um is possible you know and, and who wants to play a role in that how can we play a role in that yeah yeah mm. beautiful think... oh my goodness i can just sit and talk to you about this for for so long and sit and just listen to you talk about it for so long <laughs> I just yeah I, I love listening to you and I just find this so so interesting and so um oh gosh I don't even know what that word is like yeah I don't I don't know that there is a word there's something in there like interesting is like meh um <laughs> like it, it just seems a bit meh um when I'm talking about this when it's really powerful and important and yeah like yeah this this is an opportunity it's it's like we have all of these fruit trees all these trees out there growing fruit and the fruit could just drop and just rot and you know go back into the earth but yeah when you can actually be there and support someone through these experiences and to really use that fruit to to nourish themselves and others mm -hmm. and yeah create create a amazing beauty on this planet yeah yeah when you're the caterpillar being mushed up into a thousand pieces in in chrysalis you know you have no idea that there's like hordes of butterflies on the other end going it's really cool out here come and play you know you have <laughs> no idea at all so we need we need those butterflies to speak up you know uh because all those people have been through experiences that are amazing in their own way and unique in their own way you know and i personally think we have something to learn from all of them um yeah so i'm like on the charge for 
go, you talk about it, share your experience, you know, in a safe way, um, in, in a community that can hear it. Uh, yeah. 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 And finding, finding, uh, yeah, finding that, growing that trunk to have that strength to then, yeah, integrate it even more and more into the way that they live and, because yeah, the, through those experiences, it's a it's a beautiful. It, it, yeah, that fruit is beautiful, and so to be able to be in a place where they're they're strong, and I guess that's something that I'm more and more getting to. You know, having yeah, what there's just over a week until Kai's second birthday, and it's yeah, getting to. Uh, a place of, and I guess I, I kind of can go in and out. There's the, the grief, which is just, you know, raw pain. And, but then there's the beauty that's come from this. Yeah. Him, him not being here. Um, you know, the beautiful people that I've met with and um, connected with and uh, some of the things that have had to go like that have, I've shared um, and some of the decisions, like, yeah, Peter and I are halfway, partway through April, we pack out, well, no, we're packing now, to um, move out of Sydney. We're finally, yeah. finally leaving um, and starting yes. a, a completely, completely new chapter, which is something that, yeah, we, who knows where we would be. Um, but, yeah, at, it's it's growing into a into a new form mm. beautiful yeah mm. and you know i i love hearing these stories and witnessing these transformations because it's a privilege to um be in that space as someone is unfolding in that experience you know because it's always present right it might have happened before in the past but we're here now still, right? And the way that we, where we're speaking about it from is our present moment. Uh, so wonderful stuff, you know, to just hear that. And, and for some, it's the first time they share these experiences, you know, others share it many times over and still it can be really challenging uh, to carry on and share, but that speaks to the truth and authenticity of that experience um, and, and the place that people speak from, you know, I hear it in your voice when you speak from that place, it's from that place. Yeah. And that's, and that's the power and the beauty of it that keeps it alive. You know, that thing that we can't quite give language to, but we feel it, we feel it, we know it, we know when it's around. Mm. Um, and, and that's kind of, mm. you know, the fruits, the gold, the alchemy uh, that, that is just so gorgeous. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So before we go, um, would you like to, share um yeah i guess what how people can contact you or work with you or what what's what's on offer there there's a there's another book <laughs> there is <laughs> So um, you can jump on over to um, at, uh, I just changed it, I think it's at the notes coach, N-O-T-E-S, at the notes coach, uh, or Dr. Nicole Gruel, G-R-U-E-L, uh, on Facebook. I like to hang out on Facebook so we can chat there. You can message me and I will message you back. And the book that is coming out is called The Power of Notes, Non-Ordinary Transcendent Experiences, transforming how we live, love, and lead.